story time of the time I dated the nice guy. The nice guy. The pathological liar whose heart I broke because I just couldn't take it anymore. Fun fact, I met this guy on Twitter. Also, this is pathetic. <laughs> this guy on Twitter and he had been liking my tweets a million times, right? And we'll call him Jason. No, we won't. No, we won't. That's my father's name. We will not call him. We'll call him Jeff. We'll call him Jeff. He'd been liking my tweets and back in the day, liking someone's tweets was kind of like a, hey, I'm trying to get at you. Like this is like a little flirty moment. I caught on. I was like, okay, per, he's liking my tweets. And I look at his account and the profile picture was like an old one. Kind of tell that this picture was like older, but I felt like, oh, maybe he's just like a boy. Like he doesn't ever update his profile picture. No. This is kind of waiting on him to like message me because I was just not interested enough to like be like i see you like my tweets like let's get together no 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 no, that was not the vibe I end up tweeting something like i hate when people like all my tweets but are too scared to message me like grow up like just like completely dogging him he ends up messaging me and asking me on a date and i was like fair enough like i'll go on a date with him whatever so that was kind of it i was just like yeah i'll go on a date you guys are gonna be at me like why would you want to date with a stranger that's literally how all relationships happen also we had mutual friends so it like wasn't a big deal picking me up in his car which ladies the worst idea in the world always bring your own car to your first day you don't have a car like find your own way there because you want to be able to leave when you want to leave. Makes me to get a garbage plate, which I feel like is a reoccurring theme with me in first date. I'm like, see? And I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm already feeling like, you know, this is not gonna work. He's too nice. This is really weird. He's the door for me, and then he stops at his house and introduces me to his father on the first date. Where at this time I had a really hard time like cutting people off and just like ending things where they are because I just felt guilty. I felt like I owed people things. After this date, I kept responding slowly, but like I was still responding. I was still entertained which I know is my stuff. And it was around Valentine's Day. And on Valentine's Day, he shows up at my house after us texting and he brings me a necklace, a teddy bear and chocolates. A necklace? A necklace? I get a teddy bear and chocolates, but like, we're, like necklace? Also like the necklace was hideous. I'm sorry, it was, it was really hideous. And I already know what you guys are gonna say. We ended up hanging out again. It was so nice. And I was trying to convince myself like, Emily, you're supposed to like him. Like he's nice, he's respectful. Like you're supposed to like him. And this time, since the second seal had already been torn, we hang out at his house with his father. His dad literally got us like chicken and like got us a whole dinner and we just sat in his living room. And then he starts talking to me about the army. Why is this such a man thing to like lie about going into the army? To be like, I'm going into the army so that you'll be like, no, stay for me, stay for me. Like, no, if you wanna go like do that, like do that, like I just, just go do that. Anyways, we're like boot up on the couch and obviously like we're watching a movie so I can kind of like see his phone. And I'm clocking behaviors. He has it upside down. He's not really checking it that much, but it's getting blown up. It's getting blown up. Why is the nice guy's phone getting blown up? He flips it over quickly and I see my name and it's not my name, but it's someone with the same name as me. It was his ex-girlfriend. It was his ex-girlfriend. Explains to me that they dated and that she's like crazy, like, uh. I'm just like, right, right. I decided in my head, as soon as I get home, I'm ending this because he lied about wanting to go into the army. He's lying about this girl, whatever, like whatever, whatever. Go to part. Part two of the story time of the time I tried to date the nice guy and ended up breaking his heart. Sorry that I have to do a part two, but they took my 10 minute feature away. Why do they do this? Anyway, so I decide as soon as I get home that I'm gonna just kind of end this. I feel like he's pathologically lying. I'm just not trusting it. He's too nice. There has to be something wrong with this guy. Plus like his profile picture was so old that like he did not look like that at all anymore. He takes me home and I'm expecting to just like get out of the car, go inside, and then in a couple hours be like, hey, I don't think it's working. Okay, well on the car ride home, he starts telling me how he's falling in love with me and it had only been like a week and a half. It's like, um, that's so sweet, thanks. <laughs> Actually something I've done a lot, like with every boyfriend I've ever had, they always tell me they love me first and I usually will say thank you because I just have a problem being vulnerable. I guess it's kind of that and it's also like, sometimes I'm just not in love yet. I'm just not there. And in this case, I was just not there. I like say thanks and I walk in the house and whatever and I'm deciding how am I about to go about this? Cause this is going to be horrendous. But at the same time, I felt like he was a pathological liar. I'm like, you're telling me you're going to the army so that I'll simply say stay and like, uh, like you have your girlfriend still basically explain just that i'm like i don't want to be with someone for long distance you know and like i i saw you texting your ex-girlfriend i just don't want the mess he tells me she's like crazy and like they're not together and like you know she still has feelings for him and whatever and i'm just like yeah whatever i end up cutting it off and he's like heartbroken he's like telling me he's crying he like wants to come see me he like wants to come make up and explain things to me for a really long time part of me felt like wow i kind of fumbled like he was actually really nice until the other day I found out on facebook that he is now married to that girl and living in a far away place working for the army he was telling the truth about something though he did in fact go into the army he actually really 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 was really nice i say all of this to say that the nice guy is always just a love bomber and that's why i don't like them he always is giving disingenuous just be a little bit mean to me and i'll probably be interested okay so that's the story bye 
my girlfriend, 27 female, did the sweetest thing for my brother, 9, and now I know she's the one. My parents moved him to another school towards the end of the school year, and he had trouble making friends. He still invited his whole class to his birthday party. That was on Friday, but nobody came. None of the kids. It was really heartbreaking to see all of the empty tables when he was really looking forward to it. My girlfriend of four years decided to call her brothers, asking them to come over, and she took off to go pick up her nephews. They're a little older, but they were still really nice to my brother. She called up her friends with kids. It wasn't a ton of people, but it was way more than before, all thanks to her. My little brother was so happy, playing in the jumper with her nephews and brothers. They were all play wrestling with him. He had such a good time. It was nice that everyone came and was being so nice to him, but I'm also just super grateful to my girlfriend because she made it happen. I was watching her the whole time going, wow, I want to marry this woman. She's the one for me. Now I'm literally browsing online for engagement rings. Some comments people pulled. Your little brother was playing with his future family. I love this. Gave me all the feels. I wish you the best life ever. Make sure you have her back, my bro. Good women can greatly improve every aspect of your life. As someone who recently had his five-year-old not have anyone show up to his birthday party and saw him get crushed? Yeah, she not just pulled off something amazing, but may have made a life-changing difference. Now, how are you going to learn what her ring size is, brother? OP's response. I'm sorry to hear about that. It's a really heartbreaking feeling, especially for a little kid. Hope you guys were able to do something to cheer him up. My dad and I were thinking of taking him somewhere, so we didn't focus on that, but luckily my girlfriend came to the rescue. That is a good question. I don't know if I could just take one of the rings she already has. She's got a bunch of them and find a place I could maybe figure out the size. If anyone's got ideas on how to figure this out covertly, I'm open to hearing it. So the update. So this happened June 20th of 2022, this year, and this update came July. So less than a month later, July 6th, less than a month later. Update. My girlfriend did the sweetest thing for my brother, and now I know she's the one. She said yes. I proposed to her on Sunday after we decided to go on a camping trip. Y'all, she would not even let me finish my speech. Spent all week practicing for nothing, lol. I know some of you were telling me ways to figure out her ring size without her getting suspicious, but I just wasn't built for that level of stealth, so I brought in her sister to help me. My girlfriend, oh sorry, my bad, fiance, was crying. I was crying. She said yes, and that's all that matters to me. She's made me the happiest guy. Seriously, I'm still beyond happy it all worked out. We haven't been able to stop smiling at each other anytime we're in the same room, and I love it, lol. All that's left is the wedding and the rest of our lives lives together. Okay, story time about one of the rudest things someone's ever done to me. And I'm laughing right now because I just remembered this story time and I just had to come on here and tell you guys. Okay, like last year I decided that it was time to like do my dental stuff. Like I haven't had a dentist appointment in 15 fucking years because I never had dentist appointments as a kid. For some reason like our insurance made me didn't cover it or we didn't have health insurance but I didn't go to the dentist for like 15 years. But I can say I never had a cavity until I was 21 and I got four of them, whatever. I go up to the dentist and I'm just like, okay, it's time to fill my cavities. We'd already decided that I had cavities. I had four of them, which by the way, already freaking me out. I literally didn't grow up going to the dentist. So I was just like scared of the dentist. So I was having a panic attack. I go up to the dentist office and I'm like freaked out. And I kind of tell them like, oh my God, I'm so nervous to get my cavities filled. Like I've never had Novocaine, like a needle to my gums. Are you crazy? So the lady like decides to take my blood pressure, which I'm not sure if that's like standard procedure because again, I don't go to the dentist. So I, to me, I'm like, why is a dentist taking my blood pressure? Anyway, she takes it and she's like, oh, and I'm like, oh. I'm like, what? Like, why are you freaking out? She's like, um, your heart rate is so high that technically you should be having a heart attack. Literally don't tell that to someone who's having a panic attack. Why would you tell someone that's having a panic attack that they should be having a heart attack. Immediately, I'm so stressed out. I'm freaking out so hard that she has to turn on like water noise, like beach noises. She's like, I'm gonna leave the room and leave these beach noises on so you can calm down. I'm just like, yeah, right. Like, I'm gonna calm down now. Right, are you out of your fucking mind? I'm gonna freak out more. So I go into such a panic attack that I knock myself out. Unconscious, on the tape, fell asleep on the table at the dentist office. She comes back in, she wakes me up, my heart rate's lower because I was asleep. Then I get in the car leaving the dentist appointment and I'm starting to have double vision. My heart rate was so high that I gave myself double vision. I literally almost put myself into cardiac arrest because this lady told me that I should have been in cardiac arrest. My Apple watch was like, sit down, you idiot. Like, sit down now. I just thought that was so rude. It's like, I, why, like, why would you tell me that? Like, it's funny now, like I called my mom. I'm like, I'm having double vision. I'm freaking out. She's like, Emily, pull over. And I'm just like, lady, you did not have to tell me that. That was so rude.